It's so great to be here. My name's Rachel, and I'm part of the team here at Woody's, if you, if you haven't met and um, you don't know me. And uh, it's great, isn't it? Who's enjoying it? Yeah, amazing. We love singing folk, folk songs. They, they evoke lots of stuff in us, don't we? And they tell stories. And we sung a lot of stories tonight. And I've really enjoyed most of them. <laughs> Good King Wenceslas. last. I just don't know what that's about. I'm really confused. Feeding the hungry. Feeding the hungry. Oh, I should know that. Sorry, I feel really bad now. But um, we've really enjoyed singing stories. And I want to tell you about a story Um, that happened to me and it's a bit of a sad story actually so I'm just preparing you for that if you want to get your hankies out tissues at the ready and it's a story about me at school you know it's it's, you know it's gonna not end well and it's around sport now you may look at me now and think wow she is at the peak of physical fitness and strength yes Yes, one person is thinking that thanks (laughs) mum But actually, when I was at school, I was really terrible at sport, and I was really terrible at team sport. I was the sort of person that when the hockey, when the hockey ball came towards me, I would sort of like wince around it. And consequently, whenever the teams were picked for netball or hockey, I was never a team captain, not once in my whole school career. And um, not only was I never the team captain, but I was always picked pretty much towards the end, when everybody, they would make us line up in a long queue, like they used to do in the olden days. They didn't do that now, it's probably not PC. And they would, pick this, they would pick the sporty, really fit girls, competitive girls, to have two teams, and they would work their way through. And um, I would generally be picked last, behind the girls that had broken limbs, normally. <laughs> and then they would pick me, like, pick me, pick me, pick me. Oh, no, it's Rachel. OK, go on, Rachel, you can. You know, you know you're, you're, you're nice, but you're not very good at sport. So it's a horrible feeling to feel like you're not welcome, you're not very good, and nobody really wants you part of their team. Can, has anyone ever experienced that? Yeah, we, we, we can have a team counselling session later. It's a horrible feeling not to belong, isn't it? It's really horrible not to feel like you're welcome. It's really horrible to feel like you're a bit of an outsider looking in, and everybody else is, is part of something, but you're really not. And uh, I don't know if you feel a little bit like that at the moment, because Christmas time can evoke a lot of these sorts of feelings. You can see Christmas on TV and Christmas and social media, and everybody seems to be having a great time and enjoying it. And if you feel a little bit as a, of an outsider, it can just really be horrible. And it can almost always be like, almost be when you're with your family sometimes. Now, some of my family are here, I never feel this, but occasionally, <laughs> You come together as family from across, you know, across the country and you, you come together for Christmas Day and you can feel a little bit like you don't belong. Has anyone ever felt a little bit like that? You, you kind of not, no, no one's going to admit it, are they? Of course you're not, because that would be, 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 be wrong. But you can feel a little bit outsider. Or maybe, you know, Christmas is a really painful time of year for you for various reasons. And, it, and you just feel like, actually, I just want to be past Christmas. I want to be through the other side and I want to get on with my life. And... Um, I guess what I want to talk a little bit about tonight in a few minutes is about belonging, about belonging, because what I really, truly believe is that we have been invited, every single one of us in this room, to belong to the family of God. And if you can have the verse up that I've chosen to speak about tonight, and Luke, um, no, it isn't Luke, but Matt read it really beautifully earlier on. This is the verse. And the angel said to them, fear not, For behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. All the people means all the people. It means it's for everybody. The message of Jesus, the message of belonging to the family of God, is not just for some. It's for all the people. That was the amazing message that the angels proclaimed on that first night in the sky with the choir singing to the shepherds. Now, Brene Brown, who is a bit of a hero of mine, she's um, a lecturer, a doctor actually in America, she says this, everybody has, this is what she thinks, a deep sense of love and of belonging, and it's an irreducible need of all people. This is what she thinks. We are biologically cognitively, physically, and spiritually wired to love, to be loved, and to belong. 
that is pretty, that's pretty much every area of us, isn't it? Biologically, cognitively, physically and spiritually, we are wired to love, to be loved and to belong. And that is one of the beautiful things about the message that the, the shepherds received that day. An invitation to them, but to the whole world, that is going out to every single person to belong to the family of God. And what I love about that is that that message came to the most unlikely of people. It came to some shepherds who were probably a little bit sort of on the lower echelons of society. They lived in the the outside with with their sheep. They were probably a little bit smelly, a bit coarse possibly, um, a bit um, sort of the earth types, you know. These were not the spiritual elite, the religious elite, the people that you would expect to have a spiritual experience or a spiritual encounter. These were the guys that you'd probably think, they're not the sort of people that are going to have a spiritual encounter. And yet God sends an angel to the most likely of people because he wants to illustrate to to us that actually even the most unlikely people, this is the message that goes out even to them. Now you might think you are a bit of an unlikely person to receive the message of Jesus to believe that Jesus could possibly come into the world for you. Maybe you have believed that, but you don't believe it anymore. Or maybe you do believe that, but it's, you know, it's kind of waned a little bit. Or maybe you just think, it's not really for me. I'm not really a God-type person. I can't really believe in that sort of stuff. I'm not really wired that way. I'm not very religious. Well, I think I want to say that I'm sure the shepherds probably felt a little bit unlikely to have an encounter, not only with an angel, but a a heavenly choir. They were startled. How could the God of the universe encounter us, come to us? God doesn't rule out anybody. He comes to the least and the lost. To every single one of us in this room, he's wanting to reach out to us. I know the invitation that the shepherds received that night, that beautiful starry night, is the same invitation that he's putting out to us today. And it kind of ricochets throughout 2,000 years of history. It, It kind of went out that night, but it goes out tonight as well, and for the 2,000 years in between. And you know what is amazing? The message of Jesus hasn't hasn't waned through history. It hasn't died out. It hasn't modern technology and and computers and the modern age that we live in, which is kind of wild, has not surpassed the message of Jesus. And all around the world, in different ethnicities and nations and languages and people groups, people are discovering that the invitation that the angels gave to the shepherds that night is the same invitation that Jesus says to us tonight as well. And that is wild. I'm going to ask my friend Rupert to come up. I met Rupert a few years ago, and I'm going to ask him a couple of questions. Hopefully, if he's here. Yeah, here he is. I thought he'd done a runner. Now, um, I met Rupert um, a couple of years ago now. um, Because he came along to Alpha, and Rupert was on a journey of faith. And he hadn't, I'm just talking about him like he's not here, but um, he is here, obviously. He had grown up not not as a Christian, he he wouldn't have called himself a Christian, but he embarked on this journey of faith and, and was intrigued by Jesus and what Jesus could possibly mean to him. So what I want to ask you, Rupert, is what made you respond to the invitation to follow Jesus after you'd given it a bit of thought? Um, Well, I'd I'd always kind of thought there was a a God, a creator, um, but something that was really unknowable, so infinite, so vast, um, beyond space and time. Um, And people said, oh, God loves you, and that didn't really mean anything to me. I thought, well, how possibly could that infinite God have any possible relationship with me? Um, So I had my idea of God, which which obviously wasn't God, it was just my idea of God. Um, But I kept searching and listened to a podcast um, while I was walking to work one day, And the preacher on the podcast said, um, if God 
isn't like Jesus, then I'm not interested in God. I thought, well, that sounds a bit funny, so I rewound it, or not, whatever, downloaded, played it back again. And, uh, and it said again, he said again, um, if God isn't like Jesus, then I'm not interested in God. And I thought, well, what, what does that actually, actually mean? Is God like that? Is God like Jesus? And, and what would that mean for me as a, as a person if God's like that? Because it would, would mean that God's actually reaching out, reaching out to me um, not so that he might know me, but that I might know him. And, and it really struck me that God, would, that was the only way we could get to know God. We, we can know a book, we can understand a book, but we can't have any genuine personal relationship with a book. Um, all we can have a personal relationship with is, is another human being. All we can really actually love is another human being. So the only way God could do that was reveal himself was through um, a human being. But, but more than that, he was actually suffering and dying in my place and that was really that was so big and so god just didn't mean me well he mean, meant to make me well if i'd let him and that that really really blew blew me away and so i replaced my idea of god with god's idea about himself um so G- jesus christ and that that yeah that changed everything something so i thought my idea was god was the biggest idea you could have of god but this was something that was all loving all full of life full of hope full of joy everything that was good was in him. That's amazing. Now we're going to kind of kind of jump ahead, and um, you went came to <clears throat> came to the point where you became a Christian. You decided you wanted to follow Jesus and commit your life to Him. Now, how has your life changed since you made that step and you decided that I want to follow Him? So, well, it hasn't meant that I've, my prob- all problems have gone away, or I've stopped worrying about anything, or that I've become you know stopped doing things wrong occasionally, and I've become some some sort of a, a perfect person. Um, but I feel because God loves me, he's, he's really with me, and he gives me that real deep sense of inner peace that God's walking, walking with me um, when, when, when I let him, when I spend time in prayer and, and think about God. So that's a big part of it, that sense of peace. Also, a real sense of freedom. So before, when I had my old previous views, uh, my real gods, my kings were... Um, make as much money as you can, have a big house, a big car, and th- those are the things I, that really I, I lived for. Um, and now I can start to understand that none of those, th- all the, kind of the gloss and shine had gone from those things. Those things didn't really seem to be on, important. So the things that were really good weren't that great anymore. And the, also the things that were that bad didn't seem to be all that bad. The sting had been taken out of them. So it was a real sense of freedom from those things that kind of governed me, things that I didn't think were restraining me, but they're really holding me back in terms of that's, that was the only things I thought could ever make me happy, which were never good enough. So that sense of freedom, sense of peace, sense of uh, meaning and purpose. So even things such as you were listening to, to carols earlier on, and some of the words in those carols, when we sung them at school, didn't mean anything. Um, so heart the herald angel sing. And, good King, and, good uh, King, King Wenceslas. Wentz. Wentz. Right, okay, yeah, so certain things in there. Um, but the fact that, yeah, God had really come to redeem us, as I say, that, that meant nothing to me, but that, I... I me have a personal relationship with God and that's what these people believed and that, that that was real to me yeah that was so I'm still working out I guess to a large extent what that mm. actually means for me mm. but um yeah oh, thank you so much round of applause for Rupert thank you for sharing your story <laughs> it's so cool to think that the invitation that Jesus gave and to the shepherds and to everyone that encountered Jesus in, the, in his life is the same invitation that people are responding to today, like Rupert and others. It, that is so cool, isn't it? It's amazing. Now, I'm coming to land, and we've had a lot of joy tonight, haven't we? It's, it's been really joyful. It, it's, been, it's good for the soul when life is hard and things in our country are even uncertain and there's pain in our own lives and also in the world to, to, to know joy is a beautiful thing and if we can have that verse up again I'd love that because one of the things that the angel said is I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people and I think joy is something that as Jesus followers we need to carry we need to experience, we need to hold out to the world. And it's not the joy that is dependent on happy situations and happy circumstances, but it's dependent on knowing Jesus. It's dependent on him. And as we gather together tonight and and have a great time, you know, we're not actually celebrating Christmas. 
Well, we sort of are, aren't we? But who, what we're celebrating and who we're celebrating is Jesus. And when you know Jesus, you can celebrate him in the highs and in the lows as our lives ebb and flow with trials and challenges and joys and celebrations. We can know the joy that Jesus holds out to us and that we hold out to the world because of, not Christmas, but because of Jesus and knowing him. So as I finish, I just want to say, I guess I want to speak to two types of people here. And the first type of person is, if you know Jesus, if you're a follower of him, I want to remind you that you belong in the family of God. You belong in the family of God, and nothing can take you away from that. Or it says in the Bible that God kind of holds you in his hand. He can't, he can't be snatched or removed from his hand. And so when life is tough and it feels hard, remember that it says nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. And the second type of person is if you're here and you're here as a guest and you're here kind of looking on and enjoying the celebration, then you are, you are super, super welcome. We love having guests here at Woody's. But I want to extend an invitation to you. I want to hold out an invitation to you to consider this Jesus who we've been singing about. Consider this Jesus who the angels heralded on that night to the shepherds this Jesus who promises to bring us joy and peace like Rupert says who changes our perspective on life and when we're on the highs and when we're on the lows that this Jesus promises to walk with us and to fill us with his spirit and to help us and if if you think oh I would like to consider this Jesus tonight then I'd love to give you a personal gift a discovery pack <laughs> I actually did make these, so I sort of semi-made them, so it is sort of personal. But I'd love to give you one of these. They're absolutely free. It doesn't tie you into anything. It doesn't mean you've got to come back ever, ever again. But what is in here is some really interesting things. There's a, there's a biography of Jesus' life written by one of his best friends. So if you want to know what Jesus is like, read this written by his mate, Luke. And this will give you a real insight into who Jesus is. The last thing in here that is really important is an, oh no, the two things, oh, a Why Christmas. Very nice leaflet, yeah, take one of those. That explain it all. And also, finally, an Alpha invitation. Whether you're around Bristol or maybe you're back and you're going to be in other, all around the country, Alpha is a great tool to explore who Jesus is. And you get a free meal, you listen to a talk a little bit like this, and you get to discuss it in groups. And our Alpha at Willys is starting on the 23rd of January, and you're welcome to come and try it out. You can come once. If you don't like it, you don't have to come back. But let me encourage you this Christmas time to check out Jesus. Not to be put off Jesus by Christmas. You know, if you're not enjoying Christmas, check out Jesus. I'm going to pray to finish, if that's okay. Let's just take a moment to pray. Jesus, thank you that you are here with us and that invitation that you gave to the shepherds via the angels 2,000 years ago is the same invitation that you give us today. And whether we've heard it many times before or whether we're hearing it for the first time, I pray, Spirit of God, that you'd help us to respond to you in, in some way, in some fresh way, maybe this Christmas time. And for those of us that are struggling and maybe Christmas is hard, I pray, God, that you'd come by your spirit and you'd comfort and you'd bring your peace and you'd bring your joy. In Jesus' name, amen.